Accusations of serious criminality, especially those of alleged sexual wrongdoing are often proven convictions by the court of public opinion because the stigma is so severe but also because definitively proving innocence in an alleged sexual assault case is often impossible it seems as if for those wrongfully accused the effects can be devastating even when allegations don't lead to any criminal sanctions or convictions some allegations don't go beyond an informal complaint but they can still affect somebody's employment status or even their standing within the community. Significant damage can be done to alleged perpetrators in circumstances when there have been no finding of guilt. In recent years, we have witnessed a cultural shift towards believing allegations of abuse. And a general consensus is now in favor of believing somebody who presents themselves as a victim. This has created a catch-22 situation wherein being alert to the needs of those who claim to be victims can adversely have the effect of overlooking those who are victims of wrongful allegations. But what if in the trial of public opinion, it presented no actual real victims of abuse? What if it was an emotionally charged rumor that was used and presented in a way to make the perpetrator seem more cunning and calculated? And what if the person presenting the sexual misconduct allegations is a self-professed commentator and comedian who likes to present them in a jovial way. Is the impact and destruction to one's life still the same? Well, in the case of Patrice Wilson, he has never ever really been able to recover from the allegations that Ethan Klein made about him, about his alleged interest and intent with minors and effectively destroyed his mental health, his finances, his business, his career, and his livelihood, effectively rendering him helpless. Well, today I would like to discuss what happened starting eight, nearly nine years ago, and how Ethan Klein has effectively ruined the life of music producer and content creator, Patrice Wilson. In my video essay, Broken, the disturbing story of Patrice Wilson. Patrice Wilson. You think that you got the right to judge me? You think that you know me? You don't know nothing about me. I'm exactly where I hope to be. Despite your lies and hate and put your ring to a scene. You know my life. Guarantee we clip one random video and he's going to be on the ground rolling around touching and tickling with a little girl. Please, dude. please. You wanna hear me plead? Do whatever you need. I'm Tammy, so I can be free. I dealt with cheats, snakes, and leeches that came around. Couldn't make a sound. Found a paper wouldn't leave the round. So they were saving me, attacked me, left me dead till I drowned. I was swimming with the sharks till I found solid ground. I was so naive, I got screwed, I got broke. You took me as a joke, and five years later, I'm your hope. Yo, Leo, no, no, this was breaking me down. That paid the rent, breaking me down. The IRS is breaking me down. Sustaining my status is breaking me down. Living the fake life. In Hollywood is breaking me down I'm sick of this It's time to break the persona down Keeping it real Who pay my big bill? You think it's the boys for higher deal? I overcharge and they say that I rip people up I said I'm God who is just He is here to be a I said I'm God who is just He is here to be a Patrice Wilson this video is proudly sponsored by NordPass. Now, if you are anything like me, you definitely use about one to four or possibly even five different passwords across all of your social medias, across all of your devices. Well, the problem is, is that when we have passwords that symbolize something personal to us or something that's easy for us to remember, we can easily find ourselves in a predicament where our personal information is stolen and we are hacked. And hacking happens on a regular. I'm sure most of us know somebody who has been hacked on Facebook or on Instagram as of lately. And now with Facebook being linked to WhatsApp, being linked to your Instagram, hackers have easy access to get all of your social medias and might try and scam you or even your loved ones. But beyond all of that, we can also have some serious crimes that can take place, such as identity theft, taking out loans in your name, as well as selling your personal information to the highest bidder. 
Well, NordPass has a solution for that. NordPass is so much more than a password manager. It's an essential cybersecurity tool that makes everybody's lives easier and safer. And it's all done through a very simple application. The Advanced Online Security and Privacy app is currently trusted by over 14 million people worldwide. You can do things such as generate secure passwords. So for instance, when you are signing up to a new website, sometimes it will give you like an auto-generated password. Well, with NordPass, you can auto-generate your own and keep track of them, meaning that those higgledy-piggledy passwords with loads of different symbols and letters and uppercase and lowercase are all at your fingertips to be able to copy and paste wherever it is that you need it. The application also helps you to lock in faster. It has an auto-fill feature, which means that you can log onto a website and it'll fill it in all for you. And you can store all of your passwords in one place, meaning that there's no need to memorize anything. Also, the NordPass can sync across all six of your devices, meaning that you can access this whenever you want. But the best part about it is that it provides you with a data breach scanner, meaning that if your password is being used or they believe it to be used, anywhere else you have the ability to change your password immediately but the best part about this is that nordpass is a zero knowledge password manager this means that nobody else besides you will be able to see what is inside that encrypted vault not even nordpass's team can see what's inside now i can only speak for us girls but gorgeous gorgeous girls can sometimes use passwords with our kids names our pet names and anything that could be identifiable to us and because of that hackers and people of the like tend to see us as an easy target so let's not make us an easy target so currently you can get 70 percent off a two-year premium nordpass plan at nordpass.com forward slash page or you can log in and use your code page at checkout and when you use the promo code or a link you can get an additional month for free make sure that you use my promo code or my link as it greatly helps my channel when you do because gorgeous gorgeous girls are gonna always keep their bags secure and you should keep yours secure too thank you so much to nordpass for sponsoring today's video and without further ado let's get straight into the video Patrice Wilson is a Nigerian-American record producer, singer, songwriter. He is popularly known as the writer for Rebecca Black's Friday. His mother is of Irish descent and his father is Nigerian. He would spend his time between Nigeria, America, as well as Britain whilst growing up, which kind of explains his very displaced accent. He began singing in his mother's Christian church choir and he frequently organized talent shows at his school in Africa. At age 17, he toured with Malayan Slovak pop star Ibrahim Maiga in places such as the Czech Republic, Poland, Slovakia, as well as other European countries. In an interview with Believer magazine, Patrice talks about his entrance into the music industry. He states, I started doing it, producing music, in Nigeria in the church studio and a bit in London. They'd record me, but I had no idea how engineering worked until I went to Slovakia. In Slovakia, I met Ibrahim Maiga. He was a Slovak superstar from Mali. I saw him on TV and I was like, cool, a guy from Mali in Slovakia working in music. I never really thought much about it. But then I was walking down the street and he pulls by my car. And at the time in Slovakia, there wasn't many black people. There were maybe like six or seven black people in the whole country. So seeing another black person was like, hey, wow, how are you doing? So we talked and he was like, do you sing? And I said, yeah, I sing, I rap. So he gave me his card and asked me to come to the studio. After working with Ibrahim Maiga and seeing behind the scenes, touring with him, playing for like 5,000 people, being on Slovak TV, I thought this is pretty cool and I wanted to make it bigger. At the time I was going to school and I was really into track. I was a 100 meter sprinter and I was prepping to be in the Olympics for Sydney 2000. I actually got approved to be in the Olympic Games. I had a Russian coach and things were going really well. Then I decided, okay, I gotta leave my school. I gotta leave track in the Olympic Games and I gotta get to the States and pursue music. What do I want more? Music or staying here and being a track star and making music in Slovakia? 
I decided in 1999 that I'd move down here to the States. I was going to college here and that's why I moved here. He was an aspiring star with lots of potential and was beginning to develop quite the resume. As Ibrahim Maiga was a huge star within Europe, he must have seen something in him to have hired him as a backup singer. And that is an entrance into the music industry that most people don't even get to achieve in their lifetimes. So it's clear that music was his ultimate passion and he was reasonably good at it. Patrice Wilson attended school in Europe and was an aspiring athlete, training under the supervision of a professional coach for a possible chance of representing Nigeria in the Sydney 2020 Olympics. In Believer magazine, Patrice stated, I was supposed to represent Nigeria in the Olympics. My coach was Russian and he was a world record holder in the triple jump. I was really fast. I could have gone through with it. Maybe I would have won a gold medal, but I didn't do it. A gold medal is a gold medal, but music is music. And that's always been my number one passion. It's clear that music was his ultimate dream and passion, so he went on to pursue it. In 1999, he moved to the United States where he mixed his Nigerian flair with new age hip hop. The music of this time was very reminiscent to me of people like Jay Sean and Tayo Cruz. Shortly after this solo stint, Patrice then decided to move on to producing for other people besides himself. And he produced for a lot of potential artists. And with the help of Clarence J, that birthed Arc Music Factory. Arc Music Factory was founded in 2010 by Clarence J as well as Patrice Wilson and was based in Los Angeles in California. It was called Arc due to Patrice's relationship with Christianity. In May of 2011, Clarence J did eventually leave Arc to pursue his own solo projects. Meanwhile, later in 2011, Patrice Wilson established Pato Music World, previously known as PNW Live, which he describes as a concept for every artist out there to have a shot and a chance they deserve to live up their dream and to get a taste of the music industry. The first audition turned up approximately 30 applicants, of which they signed 10. The services that ARC offers centered around the discovery and recruitment of new talent and new artists. Artists paid initially between $2,000 to $4,000 and then would be provided with a song that was written and produced, a music video as well as promotion. There were essentially two packages and the first package, the $2,000 package, would include all of the aforementioned services and the $4,000 package would include the recording artists getting to own the master recordings whilst ARC retained all the publishing rights and sales for the song. By 2014, after the success and virality of some of Patrice Wilson's songs, the price then did increase to $7,500. And that package would include being set up with a team of songwriters, an image consultant, a music video, as well as a press release. Also, the artists would then get to release the video on their own YouTube page. This is important because Patrice Wilson would eventually get himself in a legal dispute in which the public publishing rights and sales of the songs it is that he produced would come into question, but more on that later. In an interview with Believer magazine, Patrice talks about what he thinks makes a viral song. He states, all the songs I write have something in common. They're catchphrases. The key to becoming popular is to keep it very simple and have repetitive words. If you have a simple word and you stay with that simple word, people might think it's cheesy, like that's the stupidest song I've ever heard, but subconsciously you're singing a song in your head. Even if I'm the guy who's known for writing the worst songs in the world, at least I'm still known. Patrice had a total of three songs go viral. In this interview, Patrice was actually questioned further as to whether he thinks that the insanely corny and cheesy songs 
were making a mockery of the young people who were singing them. This is what he had to say. After Friday, I had an option. I could have changed my style. I could have gone and done top 40 more serious stuff, but there's no way. Unless you're signed to a major label, if you want to release a Rihanna style song, it requires millions of dollars. I had the option to do something different, but I decided I'm already known for Friday. It's impossible to change. Even if it sounds goofy or that people don't like it, well, somebody likes it. People are still talking about it and it's too late to change now. So I'm not going to work at Sony Music. However, it seems that winning viral formula of catchy, stupid songs had arisen in the era of other viral songs, such as Gangnam Style, that launched the careers of music stars such as Psy. But it would all come crashing down when Arc Music Factory would find themselves in a potential lawsuit against Rebecca Black and her family, which would ultimately start the discussion of child exploitation. Friday went viral, a legal battle commenced between Arc Music Factory and Rebecca Black's family. Georgina Marquez Kelly, Rebecca Black's mother, accused Arc Music Factory of copyright infringement as well as unlawful exploitation of publicity rights. On March 2011, a letter was sent from the Black's attorney over to Arc Music Factory, stating that they had failed to provide them with the master recordings for the song, as well as the music video, and have been exploiting her on YouTube, iTunes, Amazon, and Arc Music Factory's website, as well as releasing an unauthorized Friday ringtone. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Patrice denied almost all of the allegations, stating, I have met with Rebecca Black's mom and everything is fine. She will get the masters to the song and they can have it all. He further states, she is not our exclusive artist, said Wilson. Once an artist meets with us and once they blow up, they have the choice to retain us or move on if they can. Rebecca is now signed with somebody else. Wilson added that he will remove Black from the Arc Music Factory website. Basically, Rebecca Black's parents are stating that they paid the $4,000 package and not the $2,000 package. So therefore, they were entitled to their masters. Rolling Stone reported, Marquez Kelly paid Arc $4,000, not $2,000, as has been widely reported, to produce the song. And according to Charles' letter, which is there, Lawyer, the agreement that she signed with ARC in November stipulates that Black has 100% ownership and control of Friday, including the master recording and the music video. But ARC's lawyer, Barry Rothman, cast doubt on the validity of the November agreement. The agreement was not court approved. Rothman said. They say they own the composition. Nothing could be further from the truth. If they go forward and license it or attempt to copyright it in their name, that would be copyright infringement and we'd act accordingly under the circumstances. He added, we are not prepared to engage them in producing documents just because they want them without a court order or litigation. We'd like to see Rebecca Black's career go forward and we're trying to accomplish that within the context of working through the legalities. So basically, Basically, what was sent to them was the equivalent of a C&D, or what we would call over here in the UK, a pre-action protocol. No legalities had actually commenced at this point. Rebecca Black's family were essentially asking for any kind of contractual proof that they signed anything stating that they were not entitled to the copyrights, the masters, or licensing. However, Clarence J's lawyer was basically maintaining that the burden of proof was actually on them to provide their own documents to show exactly what it was that they signed, to which we are led to believe did not happen. It's been confirmed by Patrice Wilson himself, the other half of Arc Music Factory, that he would often operate without a contract and on a handshake basis, and hoping that the families would pay him back on an instalment plan. And many times he would have to front the money himself and hope for the best. The parents we worked with were not millionaires. They were parents who would make monthly payments. I would have to fund the project sometimes and hope that they would make their payments later on. 
While this is just bad business practice, but it's probable that there was no contract in place at all. When Rebecca Black worked on Friday, Rolling Stone continues, Wilson's ARC Music Factory partner, Clarence J, contended that ARC did act as a record label for Black and distributed and promoted her with her mother's consent until it became clear that Black was going to make actual money. Now they're turning around and saying they were exploited, but clearly that was not the case when they were thanking me for forwarding them all the interviews with Rebecca and all of the positive comments from YouTube, said Jay. I was calling Australia on my cell phone, pretending to be Rebecca's agent and setting up radio interviews for Rebecca while Georgina was right next to me. If she thought that I was exploiting this, she could have said it. Georgina's trying to get the rights to things that she doesn't have the rights to, said ARC's creative director, Barry Wayne. So basically, the creative director, Barry Wayne, who most likely would have worked on the visual concept and direction for Friday, is also maintaining that his work is not property of the Black family. They also suggest that Rebecca Black's family started getting dollar signs in their eyes the moment that they saw that their young daughter was rising to the fame that they had hoped for. We also have to remember that at the time, a lot of people were calling Rebecca Black horrible names on the internet. She was being bullied in real life as well as being cyber bullied online. So much so that Rebecca Black's family actually decided to homeschool her. Critics and bloggers were harsh. They're downright mean. Her song Friday is the worst song I've ever heard in my entire life. Even deaf people are complaining. They walk by, they'll start singing Friday in a really nasally voice. This spring, the teasing became so relentless, Rebecca opted for homeschooling. Now her mom also plays the role of teacher. It's hard to go to school when you are so famous and to have kids constantly making fun of what's going on. Rebecca Black is a genius, and anyone that's telling her she's cheesy is full of sh**. Today, it just might be Rebecca Black who's having the last laugh. This weekend, she won a Teen Choice Award. And she sang on stage with her biggest fan, Katy Perry. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Now Rebecca, who just turned 14, can't go anywhere without fans flocking. And she's surrounded by her new entourage, a publicist, manager, stylist, makeup artist, and sometimes even a bodyguard. So it's clear to me that this was more about wanting to generate that YouTube revenue rather than wanting the video taken down so that Rebecca Black could return to normality. Now we could contest that the video is already out there, so why shouldn't the Black family earn the revenue from the video? And whilst I can agree to some degree, I was able to watch Rebecca Black's Draw My Life video, where she states that after the original original video started generating some virality. The people at Art Music Group called them up and basically said, we can take the video down if you would like and pretend and act as if nothing had ever happened. To which Rebecca Black and her family basically said, no. The people at ARC called and asked if I wanted to take the video down. They said, we can act like nothing ever happened. But I said, no. I was definitely not gonna let them win that easy. In this video, she also admits that she was aware that Arc Music Factory would be posting this video to their YouTube channel. So that October, I went and emailed the company and met with them, and they said that they would love to. Basically, they would write me a song, I would go in and record it, and then they would do the video and upload it. I said, why not? It's my own song. That's cool. So it seems as if this did not present as an issue prior to, once again, media notoriety. At that point, the parents just wanted the money. Rolling Stone continues. Suddenly, everyone's seeing big dollars and everyone's getting greedy and it sucks, said Jay, who claims that his team wrote the music and lyrics to Friday. My team just needs to be looked after to some extent. They need to be compensated for something. He argued that Black should own the master recording for her vocals, but Ark should have the copyright to the song and composition. We gave Rebecca 10% of the publishing, but she didn't even write a lyric. Good Morning America came over and I paid $400 for a makeup artist and nobody even thanked me for that. In the end, Patrice decided to hire his own lawyer and Jay alleges that Patrice would not give him access to the ARC Music Factory website. Jay states, 
Yesterday, we were supposed to have a meeting at my attorney's place. I didn't hear from him all day. He sent me a text message late at night saying, sorry, brother, I've had a busy day. In the meantime, he's going around saying that I'm not with Ark. Basically, despite the presence of a contractual agreement being produced on either side, Patrice took the initiative to essentially ice out Clarence J and give the black family whatever they wanted. Because at that time, the narrative was being spun that Patrice Wilson was exploiting kids. When the fact of the matter is, is that a video of that quality at that time was worth so much more than they had paid. They wrote the song, they produced it, paid for studio time, filmed, directed it. There was set design, editing, runners, makeup artists, hairstylists. Clarence J believed that they were the rightful copyright holders for the work that they had done as all Rebecca had to do was show up sing and film and even knowing all of this Rebecca Black was still given 10% of the publishing rights to the song that she never wrote a word of and Rebecca Black confirms this in a Letterman interview now did you pick the song or how did that work how does it work um they sent me a song right. and it was about like being a guy's superhero and right. all that but I'm 13, so. Yeah. They sent me a song, and the first song was a song called Superwoman, about being some boy's superwoman. And at that point, I had just finished up my first relationship that lasted three days, and I broke up with him because I was too afraid to talk to him. So that clearly wasn't going to be the song that I was going to sing. In June 2011, the Friday video was removed from Arc Music Factory's YouTube channel and was copyright struck by Rebecca Black's family, which was confirmed by a spokesperson for Rebecca Black's family. We can confirm that we submitted a takedown notice to YouTube as a result of the disputes we have with Arc Music regarding the Friday video. Three months later, it was then re-uploaded to Rebecca Black's own channel. Now, for those of you who are in the know, in order for YouTube to uphold a copyright takedown notice, which is ultimately what the Black family decided to do, all the Black family have to do is prove to YouTube by showing their paperwork that they are pursuing litigation. YouTube will then remove the video indefinitely until a formal judgment has been made. So I personally don't believe that the Black family had any intention of suing Arc Music Factory. I believe that they wanted to take down the video and repost it whilst they came to an agreement, allowing them to make the AdSense money from a widely popular song that at the time was generating millions of views weekly. Patrice has always worked with children and even ran a youth ministry in Nigeria. Therefore, it's always been important for him to keep his music clean. In Believer magazine, he stated, I decided I was going to keep it clean. I did that one that was a little bit sexier, but I pulled it down right away. But I want kids to listen to my songs. This was in response to a video it is that he did with young talent, Alison Gold, for a video called Shush Up, which was widely criticized for the young person's outfit as well as the video subject material. The video depicts Alison Gold as a convict getting corporal punishment. People saw the video as raunchy mainly because of the adult dancers who were dancing suggestively, even though the song lyrics themselves weren't raunchy at all. It's obvious that these children can't sign any kind of legally binding contract. So it brings up the question as to whether it's the parents who are exploiting their children in some cases. And Patrice was asked in Believer magazine as to whether he's seen certain parents push their kids into doing certain things. He said this, many times I've had conversations with parents before we even record a song, before we even get into the studio. He encourages for parents to do their own research, to Google him, to check out the videos, and to make sure that they are 100% comfortable with Patrice representing them. He says, 
You want to know that people are not going to say nice things. Rebecca Black had to leave school, so you have to consider that. No matter what you do in the entertainment industry, it has its own issues and problems. It comes with the territory. He mentions working with like stage moms or stage parents who are desperate for their kids to get famous. And Patrice made sure not to give them any guarantees of fame or virality, but reminds them that oftentimes a lot of views can bring in a lot of hate. It's clear that he gets informed consent for all of the videos it is that he does, hence why his public image and reputation is so important to him, to be known as the kid-friendly music producer. He recalls when Rebecca Black's Friday video ended up going viral due to being posted on the Tosh.0 website, stating that he didn't know what to think. And then the following day, there was a flood of negative comments. He admits that sometimes it does get to him, but you know, he just brushes it off and tries his best to move on. In the interview, when asked the question, why is this guy in his 30s hanging out with these kids playing Monopoly? He goes on to remind people that in all kids videos, there does tend to be an adult around. He states, it's being filmed by cameras and there are a whole bunch of parents standing around and watching it. Patrice expresses, coming from a Christian background, my ultimate goal was always been to unite the world and to make the world a better place so I keep that passion I've had since I was young but I do it through pop music and working with tweens. Patrice recalled that after the release of Friday that there was a lot that happened and that he never covered himself legally and he didn't have the paperwork or even a lawyer. He also states that he only received 30% of the writer's credits for the song that he wrote and then out of nowhere everybody lawyered up. This is when he decided to ultimately leave Arc Music Group behind and start from scratch again with Pato Music World, with the intention of making everybody happy around the world despite the criticism. That was until H3H3 got involved. That's when things took a severe and dark turn for Patrice Wilson, and it effectively ended his career, which at that point was blossoming with him making multiple TV appearances and finally getting the notoriety it was that he deserved for his creativity. After building Pato Music Group from scratch once again and providing his formula for making viral hits but unfortunately it would be short-lived H3H3 Productions is a YouTube channel that is hosted by Ethan Klein and his wife, Hila Klein, a husband and wife duo. Their content consists of reaction videos as well as sketch comedy and often uses satire for a bunch of different cultural social media topics. On October 2nd, 2014, H3H3 Productions released a video titled Alison Gold ABCDEFG H3H3 Reaction Video where in the video description it states, Patrice serves up a tasty little parable about cannibalism, pedophilia and rape. In this video, Ethan refers to Patrice Wilson as the nice neighborhood pedophile, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson's neighborhood. All right, who's Mr. There, I guess that's Mr. Wilson. Looking like a nice, the nice neighborhood pedophile there, Mr. Wilson with the lip gloss and the, uh, mmm. Beautiful face. That's like the uh, saw face, man. And he also goes on to call him terms such as Blackzilla and says that Blackzilla likes to rape the little eight year old white girl with blonde hair. He likes them white and blonde. Huh? What happened? Patrice is unhappy. Watch out. Some kids' lives are about to change forever. Patrice was like, that's, that's that look when couple kids' lives is about to change forever, for the worse. This image is pretty twisted up in itself. She's holding what looks like a phallic object, a little eight-year-old girl, and a big, giant, black man. Looking in on her, man. It's like Blackzilla. This guy's got a weird fantasy, dude. Blackzilla, a little eight-year-old eight white girl with blonde hair. He likes it. He likes him white and blonde. Mm. And Klein then goes on to insinuate that Patrice is masturbating in the video. His face light up, dude. 
because he knows he's about to have a good fap. Watch this. Get a look at his face. Oh, that's going to be a good fap, boy. Starts to nod and shit. Watch this shit. Yeah, boy. About to get a good fap on, son. She doesn't even know I'm there. This is what Patrice looks like when he's down, when he's ready to f bitch. The rest of the video contains commentary regarding child sexual assault, minors, and again about eating children. Wilson's wagon. It looks like the pussy wagon from Kill Bill, dude. Weird connection or coincidence? I don't believe in coincidences. You ready to take a ride on the pussy wagon? Patrice is like, Get in! Get in, dude! Patrice put out this sign for you. Get in, dude! Get in the pussy wagon! Isn't this what all parents' like worst nightmare is? Is like some stranger, some fucking weird, obviously pedophile guy is just like, Get into my van! Get into my pussy wagon! Like, this video is encouraging some very dangerous behavior. I don't know why they cast a, a young uh, amaphrodite for the role. Is that too much? Should I not make fun of the kids like that? He's got a black girl and a white girl. He's going to tear them both up. <laughs> Get that punch, girl. Yeah, you know that ain't spiked. He's like, hmm, should I break them now or should I wait until they're fucked up on this punch that I spiked with roofies? I got it. Here, hmm, let, 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 let me look at my drug cabinet where I, let me look for the perfect date drug. Love potion. Love potion. That's what the uh, Ray to call roofies. Hey, yep, yeah, oh yeah, man. I was at the bar with this girl. I slipped her a little love potion, you know what I mean? And we f all night. Spike that bitch drink, Patrice. This video is not weird. This video is not unusual. Some psychotic comic book character dripping drugs, aka love potion, into an eight-year-old's drink. Let's see what happens. I That's a lot of liquid, man. Careful, you don't want her to overdose, man. You don't want to turn into murder when dripping goes wrong, huh? Phew. Oh no, puppet potion. Ah oh, man, I gave her. Freaking acid instead of uh, roofies. Dang, man. You think she's gonna tell you no? That's why you got your love potion, boy. Human potion? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, you stop, why don't you stop drugging their drinks, dog? You want some kid to get uh, his love potion from Uncle John, you know, the weird uncle, you know, that everyone's got. Hey, Uncle John, you got some more of that love potion you used on me last week? Yeah, here you go. Here's a full vial. Why don't you go to your own middle school dance and dump it in the bowl and kill a bunch of kids, man, or, 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 or I mean, them at least, and then they'll die. Take a sip of that, boy. Take a, sip, take a sip. Wrap your lips around that. What, are you going to eat him? You're going to eat a child? I mean, it looks like Chinese food, but that's a child. Are you going to eat him, Patrice? This is what little kids will look like to him. That's what he sees when he looks at your little sister, you know, your little daughter. That's what he sees. He's salivating. He wants to eat your children. And the video ends with Ethan Klein pretending to call the police to report Patrice Wilson for child offenses. Hi, I'd like to report a crime. Yeah, my name is Ethan Klein. Okay, I was on. I just witnessed on YouTube a man uh, and eating a minor. She was eight. She was only eight years old. I saw it on YouTube right now. Okay. Okay, dude, I just saw it on YouTube. He was eating and raping a little eight-year-old girl. His name is Patrice Wilson. This video as of today has 3.3 million views. On January 3rd, 2015, H3H3 Productions released another video pertaining to Alison Gold and her latest video at the time, Chinese food. Klein starts off by referencing the previous video. Hey, remember that video we made two or three months ago about that black guy that was eating and raping like a lot of kids? Yeah, Patrice Wilson? Yeah, that was funny. That guy's definitely a pedophile. Well, it was just one video, you don't know. What? 
you just want video? Ela, this is Patrice Wilson we're talking about. This is not something that someone just does once. If we went to a YouTube channel right now, I guarantee we click one random video and he's going to be on the ground rolling around touching and tickling with a little girl, dude. Are you seriously trying to tell me that you don't think Patrice Wilson is a pedophile? They continue to discuss whether Patrice Wilson is a pedophile and is sending messages, secret coded messages, to a pedophile ring. It doesn't make sense. Yanis, Yanis to come. What does it mean? Nothing. What did you write? Is this a secret message to your pedophile ring? Sick, dude. All these different languages is a hidden message to all your pedophile friends to come meet you underground at your dungeon where you guys can exchange egg rolls, if you know what I mean. And also, Ethan then goes on to make disgusting analogies for sexual Salt. How can he make it weirder? How can Patrice make it weirder? He's on the ground cuddling and touching with a little girl. How can he make it weirder, guys? Dude, that. You know what that is a uh, metaphor for, Ela? Do you know what I'm gonna say? I don't want to know. <laughs> guys, I don't know if I need to say it, but look what he's doing. Okay. Just look what he's doing, okay? And use your imagination. I don't want to say it on film. It's too f***ed up. It's too obscene, okay? It's too f***ed up. But it's here, okay? Just use your imagination and think about it. She's a young girl. She's never, you know. And he's, you know, there. I mean, I'm not going to spell it out. I'm not going to say it explicitly. It's not okay to say. I mean, it's in the video. I'm not making it up. But just watch his finger rolling around in the red, you know, sticky you know, fluid there. Uh, just imagine what it means, okay? Use your imagination, guys. Think about it. Because I'm not going to say it outright, but I want you to understand what I'm talking about and think hardly about what we're dealing with here, okay? The finger, one finger, red, virgin. Uh, he's fingering a little girl, dude. That's what it is. He's fingering a little fucking girl, dude. It's sick, dude! Let's see if he licks it. Yeah! He loves it! Yeah, you love Chinese food, boy. I know you like it now. I understand what you're talking about. You love Chinese food. And I like the noodles al dente. You know what I mean? I like my pasta al dente is what he's saying to the world. I genuinely wonder how Ethan Klein feels about these videos now in hindsight, now that he himself is a father. Would he be okay with people talking about his son in this way? On December 18th, 2015, H3H3 Productions uploaded another video titled The Return of Patrice Wilson H3H3 Reaction Video, where they reacted to Patrice Wilson's own single, Beautiful. Baby? Baby, are you okay? You just, you just shit blue ink all over the floor. She's like, yeah, you shoved it in me, dude. Let me out of this dungeon, man. In this video, they go on to talk about how Patrice Wilson's image has drastically changed. They used to refer to Patrice Wilson as Fat Usher, and now my dude was swole. The video itself involves pregnant women who are of age. And at one point, Ethan Klein says, F Alison Gold and Rebecca Black. They were too old for him. He's got to go younger. He needs them as fresh as possible. If you look at it right, it looks like it's a baby. It's a baby stomach and they're wearing a diaper. Patrice, and you see, do, do you see it, Eel? Mm -hmm. It's Patrice. He wants the babies in the diaper. He wants them younger. That's what this whole thing's about, dude. And Allison Gold and, and Rebecca Black, they were too old for him. He's got to go younger, man. It's baby right out of the womb he needs some fresh as possible on march 11th 2016 now two years after their initial video on patrice wilson ethan and Hila uploaded a video called a very classy music video gone foggle where they review alison gold's music video for shush up uh she's got a little f doll. <laughs> a really weird one what it actually looks like a s doll. what is this doll it's a really weird it's one it's a fuck it's got it's one of these blow up dolls with a f <laughs> a giant baby f doll. Do they make f dolls out of babies? Oh my Don't God, say no. that. Don't let it be true. No. It's mentioned how the video was previously taken down for being too raunchy, but they compliment his production skills, saying the production skills are great. It's just that the taste of the video was 
a bit tone deaf. I'm really impressed with the production. The production is really good. It's just the taste. It's, it's got the taste <laughs> is not right. Something about the taste. He likes Subway too much. Okay, I've said that. He pray, he's on that Fogel diet for sure. Do you still eat Subway sandwiches? I do. You know, I don't eat it every single day anymore, better. but I've learned. Uh, <laughs> Kai mentions that this video would be something that you would see on the dark web multiple times. Well, also that'd be much better like, for the dark web in terms of sellability too, <laughs> which I think you're thinking in terms of business, which I like. Yeah. What do I do? You do what I told you to do. What do I do? Take, download this video. Send it to the Philippines. We need to upload it before, to the dark web before the internet police find it. And when Patrice shows up in the music video, he makes a little joke about conjugal visits with a minor. Do you have any conjugal visits? Do you know what that is? It's when you can have sex uh -huh. with your spouse. Do you have any conjugal visits left, Allison? No, I don't. Well, I'm gonna have to ask you to shush up then. Funnily enough though, at the end of the video, Ethan Klein talks about the fact that he's watched a video multiple times with the lights off, but then like brushes it off immediately and says, it's a joke, it's a joke. It. We actually watched it like I've a, seen this 20 a times. trillion times. So. A lot of times when you weren't here and the lights were off. No, that's not true, guys. <laughs> Just a joke. On November 18th, 2017, H3H3 Productions releases a podcast, including Post Malone, where they talk about Patrice Wilson. Ethan mentions that Patrice has made videos with Alison Gold and calls him a very creepy, very PD guy. So Patrice Wilson, for those of you who don't know, he makes like... He made four, Friday. He made Friday. He made all these videos with this little blonde girl, Alison Gold, mm -hmm. very weird creepy vibes and all of them um, we made a lot of videos making fun of him a long time ago so recently just a couple of days ago he erased all the videos on his channel and he all he has now is a live stream a one li live stream one live stream with a countdown I'm gonna sh I'm gonna pull it up right now <sighs> all right so here is it he erased all of his videos he changed the logo of his channel to the shadowy creepy Icon. Okay. It's him in a hood. Oh. And H3, look at the title. H3. It's counting down till December 1st. That's 319 hours. <laughs> and look at this cryptic shit. It just says, it's like a bunch of gibberish, and then at the end it says dash H3H3. <laughs> what do you think? What I is don't this? know, that's weird, man. <laughs> he states that Patrice a few days previously had deleted all of his previous videos and now has a live stream that counts down to the 1st of December 2017. And the title of the video was very cryptic in nature but included the words H3H3. The title was hashtag underscore O underscore O underscore O equals 65 L T at 66-6-H3H3. Whilst watching the live stream live on the podcast, the live stream itself then turns to a blue curtain. At that point, Post Malone says, he's watching you, Ethan. But well, should I be concerned about this? Why did it Whoa, just change? change. <gasps> he's what? watching you, Ethan. It just changed. What if it says something? What if it says something? Just wait until something else comes up. It was black until now. I'm freaked now. out. <laughs> Somebody says maybe it was hacked, but I don't know. He seems like a pretty tech-savvy guy. Okay, and so... Oh. Somebody manually just changed that. <laughs> what was that? But how could he react that fast? How oh. Wait, it's just cycling between them. Is it, though? Yeah. Oh, oh God. And you're I'm one. scared. What is that creepy fucking screen? Dude, I have chills right now. <laughs> that screen is so creepy. It's like a CD screen, like a screen with like guck in it. He was just moving behind it. No, it's not a screen. No! Oh, he's coming. No! Oh, it was just on the other side. <laughs> no. Is that, this... is a that is Wait, a real that's curtain. Wait, that's a real curtain? I'm I thought Dude, was... I have to, you have to turn this off. <laughs> I thought that it was wait, like wait, wait, wait. I'm scared. Effects. Should I remove this? That's a real screen. That's actually a live screen. Are you sure? Yes. What? I'm freaked out. I'm legitimately <laughs> scared. Should I close this? 
Probably. I don't want it. What if he comes out with like a kid's head? And then what? Like, yeah, what do exactly. you do then? I'm closing it. <laughs> yeah. I'll find oh out later. God. I'll find out later. Beef and Klein does understandably become a little bit more creeped out by the whole ordeal, especially after they notice the curtain begin to move. Beef and Klein admits that he is scared and considers shutting down Patrice's stream, which ultimately he does end up doing. Klein wonders whether he's being baited and says that Patrice is going to kill them on December 1st, 2000. 2017. To which Post Malone tells them that they can borrow his firearm. You guys can borrow a gun if you want one. I have legitimately thought about buying yeah. a weapon for you home should. security. You should. You okay. should. Okay. Yeah. Ethan Klein then turns to the camera and speaks directly into the lens, telling Patrice not to murder him. Patrice, I'm sorry, dude. I it was all in good fun. I wish you the best. I think you're a talented guy. I, although I've made fun of you in the past, you know, I think you're a really talented filmmaker and please don't murder me. And whatever you have behind that curtain, maybe it's better that you just keep that to yourself. <laughs> Later on in the podcast, they eventually turn back on the live stream to see Patrice walking through a rural area. And there's a house. Gila begins to get scared and they decide to shut it off. This shit's creepy, man. Patrice, Very. what are you doing? Why are you doing this? He's got an audience now. Oh Ew. no, it is. What? Oh man. It is a cell phone feed. <gasps> what are you Where doing, Patrice? This? Why is it sideways? Don't you know he's a phone, you idiot? There's literally ladders everywhere. He's climbing oh, but, up one of the ladders. But it looks like kind of. Wait, it looks like a home invasion thing because he has a ladder going up to the balcony. No, but you could have just walked up the stairs. <clears throat> Right? But, yeah, I guess you're right. What? What the f***, dude? Do I close this? I mean, yes. seriously. Oh, I saw a hand. I saw a hand. I saw Patrice's hand. It was a black hand. Yeah, I told hand. you he was going to cut it off, didn't I? It'll be back. He changed. God. Did he change the font? Okay, I'm not. I can't watch this I saw his more. hand. It's definitely him. Because we were saying maybe it's this a hacker, but I saw he has. There, it was his hand. It was a black man's hand. <laughs> what? You know Patrice's hand? There's only one black man. And it's Patrice Wilson. <laughs> it's Patrice Wilson. I mean, it looked like, oh my God. All right, all right, I'm going to close this. Dan, give me, uh, let us know if there's any updates. On November 25th, 2017, H3H3 Productions uploads another podcast titled H3H3 Podcast 40, The Madness of Black Friday and Hiding from Patrice Wilson. To which Ethan Klein remembers and recalls the videos it is that he made on Patrice Wilson in the past and states again that he gave him Peter but then goes on to say and qualify might i add i don't know whether he really is a like how would i know this to which he klein says there's no actual evidence and that it's a joke patrice wilson who's someone we had made videos before in the past he's a little creepy guy and they all have a bit of a vibe and so this was years ago i don't know if the guy is actually diddling kids i mean how could i know that but it's the insinuation yeah, there's never been anything actual. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I, I, it's a joke. Right, it's a joke. The following day, Ethan Klein states that the countdown had then changed to two hours and that there was a video looping of a graveyard and that Ethan Klein's name was in the description. Healer then mentions that there are now two countdowns. So he decided to reach out to his YouTube contacts and this is what he had to say. He had changed the countdown because it was originally counting down like 300 hours till December 1st at midnight. Mm -hmm. And so he uploaded a video on his channel and he changed the countdown to two hours and he uploaded this video and it scared the living Christ out of me. Well, wow, it's so low that you can't actually see the image on this monitor, but it's a, it's a graveyard. It's a looping image of a graveyard and in the description it says Ethan. <laughs> Like, before yeah. he hadn't called me out by name, the H3H3, H3, it could have been incidental, maybe. Part of, of whatever. His, uh... And he added a second countdown, so there were two countdowns. Yeah. One was for that day, which was Saturday, the day after the podcast. So I'm sitting at home trying to relax after a long, stressful week, and I've got Patrice's live stream open with my f and a close-up reoccurring of a rainy tombstone. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm freaked. So there was a <laughs> countdown... And it was for like sometime in the evening, maybe eight or something like that. And we were at home. Yeah. And we kept watching it and just doing whatever we were doing. 
thinking like maybe it's creepy maybe it's stupid and then as we kept going down it was like almost like an hour to the end of the countdown we started to get freaked out well it was when i saw my name in that yeah and i was like you know what this is f- this isn't <laughs> cool so i'm like ila get your shit we're leaving i'm leaving the house i am not gonna get turned into chinese food by this <laughs> creepy guy and i wrote an email to my contacts at google and youtube and i and i'm so embarrassed by that email because i was genuinely like this shit is getting too weird for me to handle and i think i titled it something like urgent a threat against my life <laughs> like that dramatic because i was like i have one minute to leave i started getting like sp- tingles down my spine i was g- legitimately freaked out urgent threats against my life this channel is making threats against my life and he's got my my name in the title and he's doing creepy shit in his channel it's like not very convincing unless you are in it. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine how it was received is like, wow, Ethan's really losing it. I sent that off. I'm freaked out. I'm not thinking. And we get in the car. We drive to a Alvis parking lot. And we're sitting there waiting out the timer. Like an hour. I'm sitting in Ralph's parking lot. I'm like, there's plenty. There's people around us, right? And then. I was expecting him to like come out the back seat. Yeah, and then he came on, and he had, like, a creepy voice. I've got the video. Oh. This is what comes on Patrice's live stream. And the number one thing today, bullying. It's so sad. <laughs> you sit there. You sit there. You sit there, and you encourage it. And meanwhile, I'm sitting in my car, like... You sit there. Nothing. But you judge. You bring people. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there in my car like, oh, this is so stupid. Like, what is my life right now? <laughs> like listening to Patrice Wilson talk about bullying with a pitch shift on his voice. <laughs> like this guy got in my head. Patrice <laughs> Wilson did. Ethan then goes on to talk about how his Reddit users on the r slash H3H3 podcast Reddit had been able to kind of put their sleuth hats on and deduct that all of the imagery it was that Patrice was showing was for a film that he was taking part in called Vantage Points, which was listed on Patrice Wilson's LinkedIn profile. So the house, the cemetery, the ladders, the curtains, all of that was something to do with this program. And they could all be linked back to the actual trailer of the film, leading people to believe that this was a publicity stunt. According to Patrice Wilson, the live stream was approximately two weeks long. However, not all of the contents are available right now. There's only snippets. And it's important to note that there was also two live streams running at once. The first live stream was going down to December 1st, 2017. And the other live stream is kind of unsure as to when it ended, what it led to and what it involved. But throughout the time of these live streams, Patrice would showcase various different things as well as make requests. Apparently, Ethan H3 is not taking this serious. He has videos up there that blatantly say things like rapist, pedophile, drug eats children. Really? And I'm still in the streets. You don't joke about stuff like that. You don't joke about stuff like that. He speaks about anti-bullying and the state of the world and social media. And Patrice makes it very clear that he has no intention of going to anybody's house or breaking the law in any capacity. He also shows himself deleting the videos from his time with Pato Music World, whilst repeating the phrase, the old me is gone, the old me is gone, over and over again. The old me is gone, the old me is gone. Matilda said I should. Matilda! Matilda, I'm doing... I'm removing everything, Matilda! Matilda! 
In a portion of the stream, he addresses people's comments that he is using H3H3 for clout, but then he shows a clip of H3H3 basically making multiple videos on Patrice Wilson to show that essentially it could possibly be the other way round. Patrice makes multiple requests, mainly for Ethan to take down his videos and specifies that this is in no way a threat. He has till the countdown to take down the videos. Now I hope he can record pretty fast because he has to record an apology as well. He has to say, my name is Ethan, however he does it. I do apologize. Everything I said was just me joking around. And hey, it's all fun and games that way. So Ethan, if you are listening, I'm telling you, not playing around this time, you have till the countdown to take down those videos and make a retraction. It is a request. And he also claims that the countdown has absolutely nothing to do with Vantage Points, which was the film it was that he was involved in. When the countdown finally ends, Patrice Wilson is seen to be sitting on a couch and he begins speaking directly to the camera. What is the meaning of all this? What is the meaning of all this? Let's go ahead and start from the beginning. The first day you saw a time ago up is a day I came back to YouTube. I hadn't been on YouTube for a while. I came back to YouTube and I said, you know what, I'm going to get rid of this channel. Maybe shut it down, delete all the videos. I started working on other stuff like vantage points, TV shows. But for some reason, coming back to this channel, I said, this channel, these videos, everything from the past, has given me so much grief. So I decided to go ahead and put up a timer, a countdown going to the first. And I wanted to see how many people would actually watch that timer. I wasn't going to put up any footage or nothing. But then I saw 10 people, 15 people, 20 people, steady increasing in numbers. And then seeing with what the press, what people like H3 said about me for the, all the false accusations, it just burnt me and I'm like, oh, I can never keep living if I don't deal with this and share my experience with everyone because the press won't talk about it, people don't really care. So I have to do it myself. So I saw that as an opportunity to go ahead and relive with you guys everything that happened to me. H3H3, that name was in there because those were the videos that blatantly accused me of being things like um, I eat children, I really didn't understand that part, you know, and so his name had to be in there so he could watch. And he can learn and know this is what happens sometimes to people. When you say certain things, it can ruin everything they do. So essentially this whole video was about and for Ethan. To show Ethan exactly what it is that some of his slanderous claims and allegations can do to people's lives. He explains what the cryptic title was about and that the number six is his own favorite number and that six six was the day that his father had passed away a year after the Friday video had become, you know, huge and viral the day it was released. 66 slash six. Number one, six is my favorite number. 66 <coughs> is when my dad had a heart attack and had a stroke and eventually died. He lived on, but he lived on a, a, a little longer, but he died because he had two strokes. And he actually died a year after Friday. So throughout that entire process, yeah, that was not good. The empty house was symbolism for him losing his house and his car and everything it was that he had worked for. Let's start with the house. I wanted to take you guys back to the empty house, an empty house that I had lost. So I had to walk to an empty house so you guys could see 
I lost everything. Lost my house, my belonging, everything went in storage. Lost my cars, everything. Everything I worked hard for, I thought I worked hard for. My passion, my goal, my vision was to help people, you know, charge way less, you know, as much as possible to work with artists and give them some kind of opportunity. I enjoyed what I did, but when everything got crazy and all the accusations I said, I can't take this anymore. He mentions the movie business and that since all of this has happened, people even to this day still will not work with Patrice Wilson because of all of the things that are about him on the internet. He states that the graveyard is a representation of the death threats it is that he has been receiving and that it started to make him suicide and that he really did consider taking his own life but then decided not to because the world would just think that people deserve to die. Therefore, he chose his own redemption instead. The graveyard represented, I, 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 I get death threats every single time. People are like, you know, we want you dead. You bloody child. You pedophile. You rape. After a while, it's taken into my head and the whole suicidal thoughts there like kind of coming to my head. Maybe it will be better off if I wasn't here. But you know what? I said no. I said no, I can't, I can't, I can't let that happen. Because the thing about it is that if I'm not here, people would say that deserves to die. I had to find redemption. Patrice Wilson then goes on to state that he developed these personalities in order to help him cope with the negativity and what was happening to him as a form of protection. The long walks and the shower simply meant I started to create personalities to protect me. I started creating different personalities because I knew that I was done. I knew I couldn't escape it. Even in the movie business, people still said, hey, I read this about you. I'm not gonna work with you. It says you're <sighs> Says this, you charge people for your game. It affected me. So I started creating personalities to help me cope. The shower curtain was symbolism of him cleansing himself whilst he would sit down in the shower and listen to motivational tapes. Anytime I was in the shower, I tried to purify myself and I would spend long times in the shower and that's when I still listen to motivational tapes, motivational words, motivational words in the shower many times and that would help me. I'm like, I'm cleansing myself, I'm cleansing myself. And he goes on to say that he understands that people can do comedic things and people can make jokes, but when these jokes have real life impacts and implications on other people's lives, maybe it's time to consider how you qualify these jokes. Ethan didn't take down the videos yet. He will. And if you're watching this, Ethan, I understand what you do is a joke. You play, it's all games and fun for revenue, for gain. But you gotta think about what you're doing. Put a disclosure somewhere saying, you know what? All this accusations, it's, <clears throat> it's, not, it's not real. I'm just a, a comedian. It's a show. And then things will be good. Because what you say affects people. Because people will listen to it and take it in their minds. And it's a dangerous game. We don't play with real kids. All that stuff, I can't even say any of that. Patrice Wilson then goes on to thank everybody for coming and all of the positive comments it was that he saw in the live stream chat. And uh, whilst people may have wanted a very disastrous negative ending, he's going to continue and stay strong. This is about redemption and this is about you guys. Nobody should have to go through what I went through. I made it alive, I thank God, I'm good, I'm strong. It's clear to me that Patrice was desperate. He was desperate for Ethan to take down his slanderous videos and to let his audience know in a matter of fact way and not a jovial way that what 
was alleged of Patrice was unfounded and untrue. So that he could again begin to rebuild for the third time the life it was that he had before he lost it all. In one of the streams, and I don't know which one, but this is something that I found, Patrice Wilson shares his entire life story that really just makes you think that Ethan Klein, the Arc Music Factory, the Black Family lawsuit and everything that it is that he worked for was now gone and he was struggling to regain a handle on his mental health. But Ethan did nothing to relieve him. He just never spoke about him ever again. But the damage was already done. That's when I lost the old company. That's when the Art Music Factory was taken. That's when everyone, everyone said all sorts of crazy things. All because of a song that went viral called Friday. At the time, I was like, this is exciting. This is really cool. But after I lost everything, I made a company called PMW Live after losing Art Music Factory. And people said, you're never going to go viral again. You can't do it. That was luck. I decided I'm going to try it one more time. And I made Thanksgiving. I said, good job, good job. And I was taking the heat from everyone. The depression and everything cost what you were about to witness. When the clock gets to zero. I lost my life. process and we lost my father. In the eyes of the internet, even now in 2022, Patrice Wilson is still an alleged racist and all of the other things it is that Ethan Klein put into the stratosphere that had no pre-existence before Ethan made them with his words. So, where is Patrice now? Well, it's not good. In November 2019, Patrice Wilson made a series called Silenced, which contained multiple episodes that centered around discussions of teen suicide and social media bullying, basically riding off the wave of the 13 reasons why phenomena. Unfortunately, he has privated them all, but it contained hallmarks of Patrice's most recent work, which includes a lot of symbolism and very dark themes. He has since renamed his channel to the Jesus Transparency Network, where he does a podcast with four episodes, and some of their titles are Voices Within, Power and Prayer, A and B, and Spiritual Warfare, which were uploaded approximately six to seven, or possibly now since releasing this eight months ago. If you choose to watch these videos in full, I will definitely link them in the resources section down below, but just be aware that some of these videos can come across as quite disturbing, if not fully prepared. But for those of you who don't have time to watch all of these podcasts, here are a couple of snippets so that you guys can see the obvious decline in Patrice's mental health. But even Jesus himself said, yeah, it's not going to be easy. Because you serve me, you will encounter obstacles. You'll be hated. You'll be scorned, disgraced, abused. Nearly give up, depressed, yeah? 
You would pray and probably doubt your prayers and think no one's listening sometimes. Giving your life to Christ is the most beautiful thing. But we encounter this. Father Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray you forgive me. Oh, shut, shut up. up. Shut up. Shut up. Wait, who are you? Who am I? I'm a you. Boo. <laughs> Can't beat your tongue now, eh? You're quiet. I'm not quiet. I'm just wondering what you're doing here. What I'm doing here? I've always been here. I'm a you. Get it into your thick skull that no one is listening, listening to you. you. So keep crying. Get on your knees. Cry more and more. Sing the popular songs. Oceans. What a beautiful name it is. And the most recent song. Come on now. Waymaker, Miracle Worker. Come on. There's no miracle happening for you. You're a sinner. It's not real. You're fake. Emotions overwhelm you and you think it's the power of God in you. But you're nothing but a sinner. You're nothing but a sinner. When I look at you, all I see is your past full of shame, no integrity. You've lost that good name, and now you think you're forgiven? You think Jesus loves you? This is something Christians tell themselves just to make themselves feel better. But you will be the same person that you were yesterday. That person that people laughed at, that person that people mocked. Relationship? Too late. Nobody's gonna love you and don't forget what she did to you. Oh, maybe a person that has issues like you. <laughs> but you're never gonna find anyone to fulfill you because you are a loser. And all you do is ask God to forgive you for this, forgive you for that. Your entire prayer is asking God to forgive you. That throws away any personal relationship you could have with Him. And you know, if you don't have a personal relationship with Him, the Bible says that uh, you are a heathen, a hypocrite, a hypocrite. You want to go preach the gospel? What gospel? God does not know you? God does not love you? You might as well just do me a favor. Do us a favor. Take this put it in and pull the trigger. But my interpretation of these podcast videos isn't the same as everybody else. My interpretation of this is a man who is continuing to create art whilst battling with his inner demons. Everybody has them, maybe this is just his way of dealing with them. In my mind, he seems as if he started to believe that he is all of the things it is that people are saying he is online and on social media. And that he is still suffering from the words that Ethan Klein said eight years ago on the 2nd of October, 2014. All of the videos mentioned are still up on Ethan Klein's channels to this day. And the most interesting thing is, is that Ethan Klein has called out Keemstar in his content nuke videos in regards to Keemstar's false accusations of p This is a man that purports to do the news, but goes out and calls a man a p based on a picture. Now this isn't a Please, can somebody help Keemstar protect him from Ethan Klein? Trope. Because Keemstar has had his own takes that could be considered to contributing to various other stigmas. But it is important to note that when Keemstar found himself to be wrong in his false accusations of Peter back in 2015 where he wrongfully accused 62 year old at the time runescape player rs glories and gold of being a convicted file called john phillips when in fact at the time the real john phillips was in jail after the blunder he immediately retracted his video and made a standalone video that is still on his channel to this day titled i got it wrong i'm sorry and will do better and keemstar even tried to compensate the guy twenty thousand dollars now whether that's because there could have possibly have been some kind of legal ramifications for him or not is neither here nor there but it is important to note that keemstar did attempt to compensate him and in fact rs glory and gold rejected rejected that compensation and just asked for Keemstar's friendship, to which Keemstar at the time obliged. On my show, when people bring you up, I'll, I'll, I'm just going to tell them that, hey, 
I think you're a nice guy and I don't want no trouble. Yet in Ethan Klein's content nuke videos against Keemstar, he used these allegations as a way to level himself up. When the reality of the situation is, is he did exactly the same, if not worse, several years prior and did absolutely nothing to rectify it. Even when the victim of his allegations is still living with the impact of Ethan's words. It affected me. So I stay creating personalities to help me cope. More recently, this week in fact, Ethan Klein has continued the discussion of Keemstar's involvement in the late Etika's death. Even when Etika's mother at the time had publicly stated that she did not attribute Etika's death to having anything to do with Keemstar. Yet Ethan continues to bring that up despite Etika's family specifically stating that they did not want Etika's death being used as leverage in an online fight and have said that multiple times to no avail even think of that but it's that's pretty, what he does though isn't mental. that like literally what he did he like goaded etika into uh into like you know really horrible things that happened to to, to etika like, he did that like, yeah he was yeah. trying to desperately create content etika was in content. the midst of a complete mental breakdown like a bipolar psychosis. I mean, some could say that Ethan Klein did the same when his unfounded allegations pushed a man to have idle thoughts in which they've admitted and possible attempts. And these things still seem to be a demon for Patrice Wilson even today. And yet, Ethan Klein has done nothing. And you can all hate Keemstar, that's fine. I'm not here to change your mind, I really don't care to. But at least when it came to the wrongful accusation of allegations, Keemstar at least attempted to make it right and made a standalone video and apologized. He didn't do anything wrong. And because of me, he was harassed. I immediately took down the video and I immediately uploaded a video to Twitter telling everyone that we got this story wrong and that we've taken the video and that the guy that works for me is no longer working for me and any damages that we've caused this guy, Tony, that we are going to take care of. Once a person is put on trial, the presenting case in the prosecution carries emotional weight. Jurors are given a graphic depiction of the horrendous abuse perpetuated by somebody who is in a position of power. In their opening statements to the court, the prosecution often lists lurid details of a catalogue of abuse, which it is claimed that the defendant committed. This creates a highly charged, prejudicial and emotional atmosphere that causes the jury considerable confusion and anxiety. That quote is by Jensen and Jensen. The reality in all too many cases is that by the time the prosecution opening has been completed, both the judge and the jury have been swept up in a current of prejudice that is so powerful that they are swept together towards a guilty verdict without being able to properly assess the evidence and the information that's being presented to them. In the case of Patrice Wilson, there was no evidence to show that he was harmful to children in any way. Yet the narrative still remains that he is the monster. What I see is a man who simply wanted to create art. Whether that art was stupid or tone deaf or silly, he still just wanted to create. Even when presented with his God-given talent in track and field, he still chose art and that was taken from him and now his current creations are the personalities he's created to protect himself and to shield himself whilst he's battling with his spiritual and emotional and mental health the frequent reporting of the high profile offenders within the media and the public's revulsion towards child abuse and has created this kind of hypervigilance. And whilst this may assist in protecting vulnerable children, it's also encouraged excessive suspicion and retaliatory instincts in the public's reaction to those complaints. Once it is accepted that child abuse and assault is an endemic within society, the confirmation bias makes it likely that most of those reported to be offenders will be presumed guilty. The reality is, in the court of public opinion, Patrice Wilson is guilty of being a p***, a 
rapist, a trafficker amongst a plethora of other allegations. All while having no victims and the majority of tweens it is that he worked with took their experience with Patrice Wilson as exactly that an experience. Ethan's words cut like shards of glass as the innocent cup falls to the ground. And at the point of that smash, the cup was overflowing. We are told from birth that broken glass hurts. Yet despite this, 11 years since the release of Friday, and eight, nearly nine years since Ethan's racially charged jovial remarks, Patrice Wilson remains broken. Oh my god, this video is possibly one of the most nerve-wracking videos it is that I've had for a while. Only because I kind of feel like, I mean, Ethan's got a hell of a lot of fans and a lot of them already hate me, so I guess I'm going to go in hiding for about a week so you probably won't see me anywhere, so witness protection program, I am in it, see you later. <laughs> but with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and were able to see possibly a different perspective to the whole situation that took place with Patricia. Patrice Wilson because even like as recent as 2020 I've been finding videos of people basically calling this man all of the names under the sun with literally like little to no proof at all well no proof in fact no proof no proof at all me and my researcher we actually did in fact reach out to Patrice Wilson to see if we could you know get some more insight directly from him however he didn't respond hopefully after this video maybe he'll possibly respond and if he does I would 100% be open to speak to him and getting his side of the story one that I definitely feel deserves to be told um also the song at the beginning of today's video is one of Patrice's songs from one of his many live streams where he sings about you know being broken down and getting back up back when he actually had the strength to get back up I also want to give a massive thank you and a shout out to my researcher girl you did the damn thing once again but also as this channel grows as this channel is getting bigger um we now need more researchers at this merry moment so if any of you guys would like to become a researcher for me it is paid work and i do provide glowing references should you move on um please do not hesitate to contact me all of the details for that will be in the description box down below i also just wanted to say a massive thank you to the family to the twitch family to the youtube members family as well as the patreon family i know you guys are sick of to death of me when it's come to this video but I really appreciate all of you and all of your inputs and insights and I love the fact that we can come up with video ideas together don't worry your requests are in a list and we're gonna get to them okay with that being said if you like today's video please do not forget to slap a like on the video as well as leaving a comment in the comment section down below and you know let's keep it cute let's keep it respectful let's keep it clean and with that being said I hope that you guys have an amazing day or evening whatever the hell it is that you guys are doing and until next time girl i am so tired it's been paige bye